listening to the weekly broadcast of the Church of What's Happening Now. At the Church of What's Happening Now, we minister the Word of God. People are being delivered, and God is being glorified. Tune in as we walk through the Word of God. Good morning, church. <clears throat> this is Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson from the Church of What's Happening Now. Let us start prayer. O oh Lord of hosts, give us strength to walk through the valley of misunderstanding, to come within our equal rim of balance and order despite our deficiencies. Yea, Lord, we are a lost people, but through your mercy and grace you found us, guided us, and have directed our paths. But still we have not followed your ways with a whole and complete heart. Right now, Father, we pray that you would forgive us of our shortcomings as we have been conditioned to follow man and not you with a whole heart. Lord, with a whole and complete heart open to you, we pray that we meet under different circumstances, putting you first, Father, in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray and give all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen. Oh, church, it's good to come to you uh, this morning. Uh, it seems a little warm outside. I think spring is, is about ready to take effect, and I think we a good thing for us to evolve in this spring because it seems like winter. Old oh, man, one don't want to let us go. I want to start today just basically, um, as I always do, come up with the things that I go through during, during the week, you know. I, I, I look at the state of our union as I, uh, our black folk in America and how our cities are ridden a lot with crime and things of that nature. And I just impart with people and just try to, you know, set up some kind of dialogue. I um, was talking to a few, few friends um, of, of mine uh, yesterday, and they said, they said, Reverend, um, you know, what you're trying to do uh, in the cities and, and, and helping to reinstate the minds of the young and things, you know, what make you think that you're going to do what those years ago could not do? Well, you know, and I listened to their complaints, and so in other words, they would give me a complaint of... Um, of uh, of, uh, uh, of low self-esteem, a, a complaint of disorder. In other words, don't go forth, retreat. So, and, and one young lady said to me, she said, you know, what you need is some dead presidents. I, she's talking about money. I need some money to go along with my campaign. Without that, in 20 years, you'll be, you be, you be just doing what others have done, and, and you'll just be like a forgotten person. I said, well, you know what, sister? I hear what you're saying, and I understand your cry. And you know what? I even go as far as saying I understand your pain. But you know, I know people. No, no, no. Look at this church. I know people that have been on drugs for 20 years. I know people that has been fighting this thing of drugs and alcoholism and all these other isms for 20 to 25 years, and they still have not won. So if it takes the Reverend 20 years and still don't get no recognition or whatever, let me be. I can handle this. You understand? Because, see, this isn't about me. This is about God and about lifting up the community. And I'm not going to let no one turn me around, you know, because I know one thing. People, psychology is just like uh, uh, groupies. You nay today and better tomorrow. This person was no good two years ago. Now he's uh, he's uh, uh, honored and, and, and respected, and we believe in him, and, and he's the man. You understand? So we don't pay these people no attention. We continue to go on, and what they could do, instead of being so critical, is that they can lend a hand and help the Reverend as we try. You know, especially some, you know, we have a, a great, good number of young professional women that need to come back into the communities and work with some of the young sisters and give some guidance and everything. I mean, people spend all day cleaning their cars, but they will not spend any time working on the mind of mankind. And when I say mankind, I mean man and woman. I want to uh, today uh, uh, 
I wrote my own speech today. This, this right here is going to be a speech. You'll hear it um, as the, uh, the program continues to go on. You'll hear the speech because I'm getting ready for a tour pretty soon. I can't tell you when, but it's getting ready to happen. Uh, first, I go to Proverbs 16.25. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. Ladies and gentlemen, and brothers and sisters, I am very glad to be here today. I would like to talk to you about that age-old thing, the black community. It has been many, many years since this country outlawed the Jim Crow law, where the United States of America wore the Jim Crow law as high as we raised the American flag today. Black folk suffered a great deal under this law, which penetrated our souls. Our every being was weighed on this law. This law and not American slavery created hate in our souls for each other. As we grew in a free country after 1863, 1865, we had to embody a law, the Jim Crow law, that depicted our whole being. American, America didn't give uh, the African Americans the right hand to fellowship as she had welcomed other groups of people. We, the African Americans, had to fight tooth and nail for for every inch of freedom we have today. Oh, my beloved people, I, the Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson from the Church of What's Happening Now, beg of you to turn sour into sweet, coal into heat. We must embody healing from the, from the evils of our past. What is happening now in our community today are a direct link from our past history. Crime, killing each other, uh, no respect at all for each other. All that evolved out of the Jim Crow law. Don't you remember black, black people when we had no, no black mayors of most of, the, of these large uh, black cities, um, large black lived cities? Don't you remember when all the bus drivers were white? Don't you remember when all the firefighters was white? Don't you remember when all the police were white also in our city? Now, chains have come, but have we, the people, embodied it? We, the people, are uh, 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 searching for progress in our community when we say enough is enough to our rude behavior, we must teach ourselves how to work together. We must teach ourselves how to honor each other and keep in mind that love has its place. In my conclusion, I say these last words, hope, love, respect, keep how, keep, keep it in place. Keep hope alive. That right there is just a, a, a brief thing of my speech that I'm putting together to do with some touring throughout the nation. A lot of people will ask the Reverend, why do I continue to go back in the past? Because you know that tree that, that hangs over your house today grew many, 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 many years ago. And if you look at your deed, you go to deed search and see how many people probably hold, owned your house, it might have been the seventh person distant from you in, in behind you that owned that house and that could have been 40 years ago 50 years ago where that tree there was first planted we must embody that same thing our low self-esteem and our unsureness of where we need to go as as uh, you hear many leaders say many black leaders say where do we go from here is a direct link to the Jim Crow law the Jim Crow law was one of the most cruel laws that any group of people faced. And from that came all the drama that we put down today. There was a time when we would go to school and we would be 
could we would come out and we were well educated it wasn't going to school the sex to school up or to learn about sex because that's just a natural impulse that you're going to do that anyway that's like you want to do that way you know but the idea is that we had a drive the african american drive is down